Good, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, June 12th, 11th, June 11th. Good God. I'm, I'm pretty tired this morning, guys. So I may fumble on my words. I'm going to do my best to keep it together. I got to, I just didn't get to sleep until really late. And of course, naturally, I still woke up early, <laughs> but whatever. Um, yeah, so general general energy reading for Tuesday, June 11th. Um, keep in mind, time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. So just because it's coming through on the 11th of June doesn't mean it has to resonate at that time, okay? It can resonate at any time for you, really. These messages are timeless. Um, also, this is not specific to love, career, or relationships or anything. This is just what spirit wants to discuss with us. Also, keep in mind that I am not accepting personal readings right now until at least July. So just bear with me there. Yeah? Okay. Um, there was a little bit of a pre-shuffle that I want to talk about. Um, in the pre-shuffle, a number of cards just kind of like dumped out. And it's funny because it came out immediately as like I picked up the deck to start, you know, channeling the energies and whatnot. Um, so it included the Page of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands, the Hanged Man, the Universe, which is a unique card in this deck. Um, this is the uh, Moon Child Tarot. Here. This is the Moon Child Tarot. Beautiful deck. I love it. Um, but also it was uh, the Five of Swords with the Four of Swords. Mm, I believe that's it. Page of Pentacles, Nine of Wands. Uh, the universe. Oh, did I say the hanged man? It was the hanged man also. Um, the five of swords and the four of swords. So there's a transformation somebody is going through. There may be a little bit of resistance to it, but that's not really what I'm getting. With the nine of wands energy, it was really uh, resistance, sort of, is kind of the thing. Um, but it's more, it more feels like apprehension. Um, there is a tendency towards some sort of combativeness, jealousy, anger, um, fear even, backstabbing, competition with the Five of Swords, but it feels like someone is trying not to give in to that well, with the Four of Swords that came out, but that could also be why someone is feeling resistant or guarded with the Nine of Wands. There's a perseverance energy here involved. Now, with the Page of Pentacles, and the hanged man, um, you have an energy of someone either reaching a new level or trying to reach out in some way to um, maybe make some sort of offer, start some sort of commitment. Um, however, it does take a change in perspective with the hanged man energy, also with the four of swords energy, because I do see the hanged man and the four of swords as like the major minor arcana versions of each other. Um, but what it feels like is this change in perspective has kind of already happened internally. Um, and so that's why they're looking to make some sort of change or make some sort of offer. Maybe you are doing this. This could be you. This could be someone else you're connected with. Um, Excuse me, guys. Uh, so I'm hearing a change is happening and offer is coming in some, some way. Maybe you are the one that wants to make some sort of offer. Okay. Oh, the universe actually being in there. The universe represents... Um, basically your journey up until this point culminating into a place where now you can make a change, um, take a leap of faith in some way, having learned quite a bit on your journey so far, you know, and everything kind of just lining up to match this one magical moment almost. The universe represents like a culmination of your journey so far. And there's like a next, a step up to the next level on its way, approaching, in the process of happening. So, okay, uh, uh, that, I mean, that's for somebody out there, I'm not sure, but I, like it immediately, as I started pre-shuffling the deck, it just kind of fell out, so I wanted to make sure I mention it. 
But now, let's get into the rest of the reading and see what Spirit has for us today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so yeah, I'm gonna give this three shuffles, but the very first color that I saw um, was purple, which represents universal wisdom, um, just spiritual wisdom, wisdom in general, uh, maturity, royalty even. But here, this is universal wisdom being accepted and integrated. So someone actually really is going through a major eye-opening shift in their lives that is leading to some sort of, yes, a change in perspective, but also um, a new beginning, a new start, a new offer, a new level having been reached. Mm. Okay, three shuffles. Tuesday, June 11th. Best messages, please, Spirit. Tuesday, June 11th. One more shuffle here. Okay. Here we go, guys. Okay. Oh, goodness. Sometimes... This, this deck is really hard to shuffle like this. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to leave it there underneath the deck. Now we have the Five of Wands. Okay. We have Page of Wands. Oh, Ace of Swords, Four of Wands. Wow. Okay. This is short and sweet, but I'll take it. <laughs> as opposed to some of the other readings that we've done. Um, alrighty, so. Page of Wands, Ace of Swords, Four of Wands. Someone really is, I'm hearing self-discovery here. The Page of Wands to me is an energy of um, rede rediscovering yourself, uh, re-identifying yourself, um, figuring out you know, getting to know your talents, your skills, your abilities. Um, the Page of Wands also represents a new creative endeavor. Um, I'm hearing feeling lustful, but it feels different, like a lust for life, maybe. Um, there may just be some sexual energy involved. Um, someone may be inspired towards maybe settling down in some way. Um, you do have the Four of Wands here and the Ace of Swords. Uh, there's an understanding, seeing something clearly, knowing, is, knowing what it is you want out of a situation. And yet, interestingly enough, there's the Five of Wands. But here, the Five of Wands feels like an energy of, I don't know how to approach this situation. I don't even know how to start. Um, it could be, you know, uh, uh, inner conflict in having ideas about different ways to go about things, about different ways to get started in this creative endeavor. Here, though, this Ace of Swords really just feels like the wisdom, the aha moment that is kind of setting something in motion here, where it feels like someone was kind of like in the dark about something in the past or wasn't too sure about it. Now either that wisdom is coming through, Ace of Swords, like it's on its way, or you've already achieved it. Like you are, somebody already knows it and wants to take action. 
That's what I'm hearing. And wants to take action. Page of Wands wants to get started, wants to get moving, you know, exploring, discovering. Now, this Ace of Swords energy could int very well be... Um, Uh, a, a result of the page of wands in the self-discovery. Someone's finally, maybe finally understands something about themselves, which is allowing them to move forward. In that case, the five of wands energy could be a situation in which maybe there are outside opinions that are differing that they may have to compete with. But it doesn't feel that serious. I really do feel like with whatever information has come through here in this Ace of Swords, this energy here that could be um, in opposition, it doesn't, it's minuscule compared to the balance and the union here that's coming forward through this. There's a card underneath this. I think it's the Nine of Cups. Yeah, that's good. Um, huh. every time I see this, the nine of cups, I hear satisfaction guaranteed. Although that doesn't always have to be a good thing, right? That can sometimes be tricky. Whatever this opposing energy is of the five of wands, maybe even the five of swords, because this could, this could entirely be connected to the pre-shuffle, whatever came out earlier in the pre-shuffle. Um, but whatever, whatever this conflict or this opposing views, differing opi of opinion, it really doesn't seem to weigh too heavily on this situation because whatever is understood here in the Ace of Swords is, well, outweighs it. So in reality, I really just feel like somebody is just trying to avoid conflict but still isn't too worried about it is what I'm hearing okay four of wands is in fact a union card um, but it's interesting because what I'm hearing when I look at the four of wands I'm hearing union masculinity so there could be some masculine individuals that are either going through a phase of coming into a deeper union within themselves, like within the masculine and feminine. Or, like it could be a physical man, or it could be like a woman that resonates more with masculine energy. Anyway, either way, I'm hearing that there's some there's an, a, an individual that is more on the masculine side that is coming into a sense of union. This could be someone finding a counterpart or becoming aware of wanting to have some sort of union, stable relationship with a feminine counterpart. And kind of dreaming up ways to do it. Page of Wands getting inspired there also may have been what I'm picking up also is there may have been an, an aha moment that has inspired someone to do some I just heard self-recognition interesting so either someone was inspired like saw something recognized something within themselves or within another person that has allowed that has catalyzed this sort of self-discovery cycle or self-discovery project something like that it's interesting okay let's get into the clarifiers now i'm going to use the epic tarot today Um, fairly short reading. All right. One more shuffle.
Oh, okay, we have we have the hanged man again. Which is underneath the deck. So there's a change in perspective that is definitely here. Um, that is happening, that is in the works. And I really do feel like um, someone is finally gaining some sort of wisdom, knowledge, or understanding with the Ace of Swords here that's allowing them to come out of some like stuck or stagnant phase or cycle in their lives, okay? Remember that the, the, the hanged man came out in the pre-shuffle before I started the reading, or started the video at least, so um, this is definitely connected somehow. We're going to start with the Page of Wands, and I am going to try and clarify like each one of these pieces here, because there's only three of them. So we're going to start with the Page of Wands. Just some clarity, please, Spirit. For this... Oh, Judgment in Reverse. Okay. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Six of Cups. So there's a judgment call that has been made, huh, in the past. Ooh, King of Cups, whoa. Okay, so what I'm getting with th th this, because this is judgment. Um, it came out in reverse, and it flew all the way over here. So there was a past circumstance, a past decision. Or what I'm really getting with this is especially with the Six of Cups being underneath the deck here. Um, fate intervened. I feel like this was like a crossing of paths from the past that has led to all kinds of things happening. Okay, this could be a situation in which you're dealing with a soulmate here. Um, I'm just, I'm getting some sort of past circumstance or situation that lined you up with this soulmate six of cups potentially if you're if this is resonating as a romantic situation for you um either way i'm still getting that there was a past situation and it feels like it was fated and destined um, you may not have recognized it or realized it at the time because it may have been pretty rough is what I'm getting. But now when you look back, you can see how everything kind of lined up to get you to this place here to be in a really emotionally responsible energy and just do some recreating of the self here from a more emotional point of view. And that could absolutely resonate with more masculine energies here because the king of first of all the king of cups has like I, i've been saying this but the king of cups just keeps coming out um and so i do feel like there is an energy of emotional responsibility that's coming into play right now for a lot of people especially masculine energies okay so even if this isn't a uh, uh, even if this isn't a romantic situation for you, it still feels like something that was fated and destined to happen to help get you or get someone in an energy of, I'm hearing mastering themselves, but also in a sense kind of growing up, okay? Um, but the combination between the Six of Cups here underneath the deck and the Judgment in Reverse, this, it, it does feel like it was something faded. Like it was meant to happen. Okay, let's move to the Ace of Swords now. I'll put this here. So what is this clarity, this truth, this understanding that someone... Ooh, Ten of Swords. Okay. All right, Ten of Swords with the Two of Cups. I just heard Faded and Destined again. And also, you know, the Ten of Swords flew out this way. It did kind of land on this Four of Wands here. And it's kind of in reverse here. So... There's definitely a release of an old cycle involved. Okay. Uh... 
I'm hearing someone was able to get out of their own way here and really see things clearly. They put an old toxic cycle to rest. Someone here, maybe you, maybe someone else that you're connected with has put an old toxic, potentially narcissistic cycle to rest and finally understands fully and it could be <laughs> okay what I was gonna say was it could very well be because of the emergence of some individual in your or their lives but I as I was saying that spirit said to me a relationship has started unbeknownst <laughs> unbeknownst to the viewers or unbeknownst to those who are involved in the relationship. Like, I, I, I guess, that is such a weird message, Spirit, but I guess it means that um, energetically, a relationship has actually kind of culminated, but it hasn't really made, maybe it hasn't really been expressed yet uh, physically. Okay, no, that makes sense if we're talking like a, a spiritual union. Okay, but I don't know. The way that they said that a relationship has started to me means that like if you are connecting with someone, if you're vibing with someone, um, and I think you, honestly, I think you'd be able to just feel it at this point, but like you two are definitely into, into each other and not really interested in anyone else. You just haven't gotten to the point where you could really ask or you, you've like really asked each other out or anything like that but they just said it again a relationship has started and it's going well because of the release of this toxic narcissistic cycle it's literally like um and this could actually be for both of you you know one of you being on like you will call it the empath and narcissist cycle one being on the empathic side, the other being on the narcissist side in the past. It doesn't necessarily even have to mean it's with the same person. It could be a brand new person that may, may have, you know, experienced these energies before. Um, or it could very well be with the same person because we did have at the Six of Cups come out. Okay, so it could be someone from your past. You could have a past relationship with them, like a past life or something like that. Um, but it seems like somebody has changed or someone is changing regardless of who they are to you, like if, regardless if they are from your past or not, it does feel like somebody has changed. And I want to say that narcissism does run rampant in our society, okay? So um, I really kind of feel like everybody has experienced, come across, maybe even expressed some narcissism themselves. It's, it's, I mean, it's within everybody. It's a massive, major part of our social construct at this time in human reality. Maybe not just this time, but you know, actually it's been plaguing us for millennia. But yeah, I'm saying that to say that I don't want anyone to, to, to start pointing fingers. We all experience it, okay? It's what we do about it that really changes things and really matters. But you do have a coupling here, the Two of Cups. You have the King of Cups. You have the Two of Cups now. You had the Six of Cups before. This is faded and destined. And honestly, it was faded. It could have really been faded and destined to happen this way so that not necessarily because of the specific individual, but because of what we are going through as a society right now, the clearing, the purging, that is allowing someone to heal and change these cycles and recreate their karma, recreate their destiny from a clean, cleaner slate. And then on top of all that, whoops, on top of all that, we have the Four of Wands finally. Okay, so we definitely have a situation in which some, someone, I'm, I just heard, I wanted to say, and I, want, and I heard, someone is ten, in, intending on getting married, or, okay, yes, marriage is an option here. It could also be that someone just wants to settle down, have a solid, stable relationship, 
to then later on maybe talk about marriage. Yes, it does feel a little bit like a ways, a little ways away. You're not quite there yet, but I mean, if you do want to get married at some point in your life, I would say, or remarried, like in my case, <laughs> I would say, you know, hold on to that feeling, but don't hold on to expectations of a specific person, right? Okay, so what does this Four of Wands represent, please, Spirit? Oof, whoa. The star, oh, the hanged man again, and then the Seven of Swords, but the Seven of Swords was coming out and wanted to go in reverse here. Ooh wee, look at that. The fool. Okay. So we do in fact have the hanged man again. We also have the star and the seven of swords. It needs to be Okay. I'm gonna turn the Seven of Swords upright here. Because it's not a bad thing. At least in this situation, it's not a bad thing. It's just um, a matter of someone just, yes, keeping secrets. But I don't. I want to. I really want to say, and Spirit is saying through me that they're not keeping secrets intentionally, or I mean, like, okay, maybe they are doing it intentionally, but it's not out of malice. No one's trying. I, I really don't feel like someone is trying to, um, like, get away with anything right now. It's just that. They're not opening up about it, is really kind of what I'm getting here. But a change is happening, but that's also why I kind of want to leave this reversed. Because it also feels like someone may be coming out of some sort of deceptive time, deceptive tendencies of just not, not completely opening up all the way, or not opening up easily. Now, at the same time, this Seven of Swords can be upright because someone may have intentions of starting anew, taking a leap of faith, but they're not letting on to it. They may, I've also heard they're not giving in to it just yet. Again, we do have the Hanged Man here again, so... This person may be coming out of a period of feeling suspended or feeling in some sort of suspension, um, stagnation. Ooh, I heard apathy. But then with the star here, there's a lot of healing that's happening and they're coming out of the darkness. Like if you look, I, can, I literally, it looks like this person is coming out of the darkness and stepping into the light which is a beautiful thing. And honestly, that takes some time. There's a, pers there's a change in perspective that is happening here that someone just may not be letting on to. And that's not a bad thing. There's no reason for them to have to announce it to the world, you know, when they're not even when, especially when they're not even ready to do so. Okay. Okay. This is nice, you guys. All right, so I'm just gonna close the reading here with an oracle card, and I am being called to use the Crystal Mandala deck today. And we will see what we get. shuffle here <laughs> there is a lovebird sitting out on the power line across from my apartment love is in the air y'all <laughs> okay here we go best mess Ooh, oh no that's too many we can't we cannot be doing that <laughs> cannot be doing that best message please spirit for today 
There it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Card number 44, Sacred Pleasure. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, there's two. Okay. 44, Goddess Basta and Cat's Eye, Sacred Pleasure. Card 50, Goddess Persephone and Ruby, the Inner Queen. We're going to start with 44 here. Okay. Sacred Pleasure. We bring you the empowerment of Sacred Pleasure. It is said that the spirit had to be enticed into the body to give up its complete freedom and willingly take on an experience of limitation that could lead to divine growth. It needed, to deal, it needed the deal to be sweetened, so music was created, music that could only be felt and expressed through the body. Spirit jumped in like a flash and life was created. There is more life that can be created in you and your world. Although you are undoubtedly... Oh, I'm sorry. Although there are undoubtedly struggles as a natural part of opening up to more life, there is divine sweetness too. That is the gift of sacred pleasure. This is the pleasure that gives you joy in your aliveness. It is innocent, sensual, and life-affirming. It's time for you to receive more of this. The oracle says it's time to put a little sugar in your bowl. And honestly, that's kind of what is coming through here with the hanged man and the star. It's just someone's not really <laughs> opening up about it, Seven of Swords, which is totally fine. There is no reason for that. Unless, unless it is absolutely necessary that someone open up, like in the situation where someone needs to now communicate their feelings, okay, that, that makes sense. But I don't want anyone to think that a transformation, even a major transformation that someone is going through, has to be immediately disclosed right away. Like, that's not fair. You need to give them some time and space to deal with it on their own first before they're ready to just open up with you about it. And I, I, I feel pressed to stress this because it's coming out as the seven of swords and i don't want anyone to think that someone is really trying to be all that intentionally deceptive that's not what i'm getting here okay it's just a matter of a process of awakening that's all and they need their time and space and energy to to, to get to terms come to their own terms with it it may be it may be a sort of elephant in the room situation for them and so or even for you okay so like i'm saying them but this could be from the point of view of the viewer okay so please i apologize if this is whatever but it could really be an elephant in the room situation i guess i i don't know really why i got that well okay because you see here you see how that that guy is really big compared to the woman here who's really small it may be a situation that they really just can't hide from any longer and they have to deal with it but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to communicate it to you right away because they may just may not just be ready i don't know why it was so important for me to say that but i'm going to continue <laughs> with card number 50 goddess persephone and ruby the inner queen we bring you the empowerment of the inner queen the inner queen exercises authority through divine feminine wisdom her empowerment is active within men and women that consciously seek to honor feeling, instinct, and intuition and choose to live their lives according to a moral code of compassion. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. You can understand that human beings who cannot resolve their suffering will unconsciously act out their, their pain in the world. They are unconsciously expressing their inner story with their own, with their outer actions, the story of their inner pain. The healing power of the inner queen brings an inner pain to consciousness where it can finally be released and the soul freed. This can happen because of her compassion. She does not approach life with a fearful or judging nature, so she can move freely through all realms, witness great pain and darkness, and remain centered in her heart, shining a gentle light of intention for the liberation from suffering for all beings. She reminds us of our innate divin divine dignity and the healing power of compassion. All right, you guys, so there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
Um, I hope you guys have a great Tuesday, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.